Northside Redskins, and you will not Well, Northside finished fourth in the SAC. Carroll finished fourth in the NHC. Not bad, but there is some help on the way. Northside freshman Sean McGee rated as the 38th best freshman in the nation. Carroll's Chandler White rated as the 93rd best frost in the country. That, according to SportsPressTV.com, the internet never lies. McGee and White going head to head at Bay Hay Arena as we pick this one up in the first. How about a senior? Yeah, Andy Bachman, the 6'5 senior with the putback right there for the skins he had. 12, and then it's more from Shabazz colleagues' team. This time on the defensive end, Trevion Cruz with the steal, the layup. Northside up by six early. Coach Beasley saying, you know what? Let's try to break that press, and they do it. Tony Orr, the old-fashioned Tom Chambers the fake, fake move. He lays it in, but Bachman was too good. He knocks down the jumper. Quilin Howard Upshaw had 16 to pace the Redskins as they beat Carroll 52-37. Up in Kendallville East, Noble led by senior T.J. Blair. He'll be playing at St. Francis next year. The Knights hosting Dwanger. And speaking of Mr. Blair, he dials long distance right there. 14 points for T.J. on the night. Dwanger answering right back with the masked men. Michael Kindler dropping in two of his 10 points. Brent Lockbiler, he hits in the lane. Inside little hook, nine points for him on the night. Back comes East Noble. Andrew Gordon, a little spin move, but... Dwanger too much tonight. Mike Fia Cable to Ryan Watercutter. He had eight. Dwanger wins 43-37. Blair is actually the prime minister of Kendallville. Not a lot of people know that. At Whitco, Logan Irwin came into the night with 2,039 career points. 34th best in Indiana history. Irwin looking to add to that total against Wayne in the fourth. He buries that one. How about Irwin again? This was a huge bucket because it put Whitco up by 156-55 in the fourth. Wayne trying to counter. Kendon Lewis to Jesus Mitchell. Wayne up by one, but Irwin simply too much. He'd have 36 on the night. He's now got 2,075 points. He's 29th in the state of Indiana, and he passed George McGinnis today as Whitco wins 65 63. Congrats to Mr. Irwin there. How about Leo, the number one scoring team in the state, almost 85 points a game? They would add to that tonight, hosting Lakewood Park. That was Gage Corner hitting the three in the corner. Back come. The Panthers, Zach Crosby, Brooks Gerke, he drops in to his 15. But how about corner? Huge night for him, dialing long distance again. He had a game high 32 points. Lakewood, though, hanging tough. Jake Neely converts down low. He would have seven. It was all about the threes tonight for Leo. Fazan Stevens, he had 15. Then Taylor Horn, he had nine. Leo wins 94-81. Boys know how to score at Leo. DeKalb County bragging rights on the line at Paul Bateman Gymnasium. DeKalb at Garrett. Garrett got him on the football field. DeKalb hoping it wouldn't happen on the basketball court. That was Austin Macy with the jumper. He had 22. Garrett Drake Landis having a solid season. Gets the bucket right there. 24 points for him. Landis again. This time, though, he is stepping out. How about that little jab step and then the three? You gotta love it if you're a Garrett fan, the ladies love NC15 Hello. up in Garrett country, apparently. Spencer Snyder with a basket right there as DeKalb wins those bragging rights over Garrett, 52-43. We've got more Highlight Zone, including Comets Fisticuffs, next in the Highlight Zone. In there. If you get your names, our names, you get on It's TV. money. It's going to be in there. <laughs> well, uh, Maverick Ballmer is pretty much a staple when it comes to the Highlight Zone, and he's been pretty much a staple when it comes to the Play of the Week this year as well. And this week would be no different for the Play of the Week. Let's go back down to Burn. Adam Central taking on South Adams, and Maverick Ballmer taking over in the fourth quarter, doing a little bit of this, lift off, jamming it down. I think this is like the third or fourth Play of the Week for Maverick this year, but hey, it's a highlight if I haven't seen one. He had 18 points. Adam Central wins their first outright title since 1977. Keep your eyes on the two for this. Third game in a row, Comets facing Blooming Bloomington. Captain Colin Chalk suffered a concussion Tuesday night during a fight in Bloomington. So, yeah, less than two minutes in, they get scrappy. Look at the top part of your screen as Nick Boucher. Boom! Goalie coming in out of nowhere to sock the other team's goalie. Take another look at this. Top of your screen, Boucher. <laughs> Woo! You think that's
that was a little retribution for the old he child. He never even seen it coming. Yeah, the guy's got like a Hitler mustache of blood going on. I mean, it was wild. Boucher was tossed. They would get the other team would get two goals on the uh, power play, but then Frankie DeAngelis scores a shorthanded goal. Frankie D had two goals in this one, but it would not be enough as the Comets fall five to four to Bloomington. We may see some repercussions <laughs> on that as far as suspensions go. I don't know. Yeah, plenty of emotion in that game. In fact, I'd rather look at the highlights of that fight than tell you about the Mad Ants right now. Mm. <laughs> Mad Ants, yeah, they've lost their seventh straight game now. They fall 109. 93 at Texas tonight, despite 29 points from Ron Howard, the Mad Ants will try to avoid an eighth straight loss on Sunday when they travel to Iowa. That's 11 losses in their last 13 games. Did you see that fight at the Comets game? Yeah, that was good. It's actually already on our <laughs> website. Hey, IPFW men's volleyball hosting Carthage. Wow. First set, that was Rob Samp with the kill. IPFW up 9-5, then it's Ramona Bergeau with 10 kills on this one. 13 to 10 IPFW, time for popcorn. Yvonne Matos, 14 kills, that was just in. Don's win game 125 to 20, but Carthage, they do this during the timeouts. I don't know what it is. It's Maybe the river dance. River dance thing going on. <laughs> Michael Flatley, apparently a great volleyball conduit because Carthage would come back to win the final three sets. They win this one 3-1 at IPFW, the Don's head out on the road tomorrow to take on Ball State in men's volleyball down in Muncie. But the real big story around here tomorrow will be girls regional play. I know you got it all covered. Tell us what you yeah, got. Yeah, we've got nine teams moving on to the next level. we got uh, sites at Belmont, Rochester, Caston, Tipton, Tri-Central, Kokomo. You know, we got cameras going all over the state. We'll have semifinal action at 6 o'clock, and then hopefully they'll move on to the championship game, and we'll be at those as well. Really looking forward to that early game down at Kokomo. Southside Snyder in girls' action 4A should be good. Third showdown.